Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at the 3D texturing toolpath options available in Aspire and VGarth Pro. We're also going to cover how to create toolpaths for raised prismatic lettering that will leave the raised J and B logo in the middle of this sign. To explain how to use the 3D texturing toolpaths we're going to use this very simple logo. This is a sign that's 18 inches by 18 inches and we're going to cut it into one inch thick material. If we click on the outermost circle, select that circle, you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner it tells us that it's 16.6 .6 by 16.6 .6 inches. This means it's 16.6 .6 inch diameter circle. Okay, we're going to swap from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right. On the toolpath tab on the right we set up our material settings, so one inch thick material and set up the clearance heights and the retract height for the home position. The first row of icons are for the two dimensional toolpaths such as profiling, pocketing and drilling and quick engrave. The second row are our 2.5D slash 3D toolpaths, so 3D V carving, uh, fluting, 3D texturing, prism raised prismatic lettering and also our inlay toolpaths. In this case we're going to use the 3D random texturing toolpath. If I click to deselect everything so we've got no vectors selected, here we're going to use a half inch diameter ball nose. I'm going to tell the software to carve the texture 80 thousandths deep into the wood. There's some sliders here for controlling the randomness of the and the, the repeatability of the, the texture pattern. So you can experiment with the sliders, experiment with different step overs and angles. Now if we calculate the toolpath, the three dimensional view opens and you'll see that we've textured the complete panel. If we preview this toolpath, you'll see there that the tool is running across the material and texturing the whole 18 by 18 inch panel. If we just interrupt this for a moment by clicking on the little red cross, reset the preview. If we go back to the two dimensional view, if we select a vector to texture, so we select the circle, and we, sorry, we double click to edit the texture, select the circle. If we now recalculate that texturing toolpath, it's been limited inside the circle. If we say view tiley, tiley two dimensional view and three dimensional vertically, we can now work in both the two dimensional view open and the three dimensional view. If we double click to edit this toolpath again, but holding the shift key down, we include the J and B logo in the selection, recalculate the toolpath. You'll see now that the, the toolpath misses out the letters. So if we say preview the toolpath, you'll see the 3D preview machining inside the circle, but not texturing inside each of the letters in the logo. So the texturing can be constrained inside a selected vector. If we look at the, the texturing there in the three-dimensional view, you can see that it's moved around each of the, the J and the B and the, the ampersand in the middle. If we wish to engrave the texture into a pocket, so let's say, for example, we wish to pocket machine the background material away from the, the logo, we're going to say, OK, reset the preview. We have the vectors selected. So I'm going to calculate a pocketing toolpath. Let's use a, a quarter inch end mill. So here we've got a quarter inch diameter end mill, step down, a pass depth of 0.3 of an inch. Calculate. If we give this a, a depth of say 0 0.6 of an inch and we say calculate, we've now got two passes in our toolpath preview the toolpath, go 0.3 deep and then another 0.3 deep. So we're machining the background material away, leaving the J and the B raised. If we just add some colour to this, so preview in dark red, there you'll see that we've left the letters raised. If I place the cursor on the background here, down in the bottom right hand corner you'll see that it says Z equals 0.6 or Z minus 0.6. We can now texture 
inside that pocket area so if we go back to the texturing tool double click to edit let's give this a, a start depth of 0.6 of, a, of an inch and if we use exactly the same parameters what you'll find is that the toolpath is going to carve into the lettering and it will also carve into the outer edge of the circle let's just calculate it and show you the results if we say preview this toolpath so the texturing is selected let's double click to maximize this preview the toolpath you'll see that the texturing tool is running to the edge of the selected vector what that means is that the although the the tip of the cutter stops at the vector the radius is overcutting so it's overcutting on the outer circle but it's also overcutting on the letters in the middle this isn't what we want so when that's finished previewing if we reset the preview let's go back to the texturing toolpath so double click to edit there's an option on the form to create a, a temporary boundary so this is this offsets the boundaries inwards to ensure that the selected area that the toolpath only machines inside the selected area and doesn't damage the lettering or the, or the outer boundary so here we're using a half inch time to cutter we'd recommend that you offset this boundary inwards automatically by at least the radius of the cutter so quarter of an inch now if we recalculate the toolpath let's preview the pocketing toolpath so preview select the texturing toolpath preview this toolpath you'll see now that the toolpath is being limited it's not machining right up to the selected boundary it's machining a quarter of an inch away from the boundary both at both the circle and around the lettering okay let's give this toolpath some color so we'll make that the same color so dark red so there you'll see that we've textured but we've been ensured by let's just double click to edit this by specifying a boundary offset of a quarter of an inch which is the radius of the bore nose cutter being used to form the texture we've ensured that the letters don't get damaged and the outer circle don't get damaged let's make the the actual logo a little bit more interesting at the moment it's just a raised plane because we pocket machined 0.6 of an inch deep so if we close this toolpath if we tile the views again so view tile vertically this time if we just select the logo the J and the B so we click and drag to select if we now go to use the pr raise prismatic toolpath option let's select a cutter so we're going to use let's use a, a cutter from the tool database let's use a half an inch 90 degree uh, V carving toolpath tool and if we click calculate the depth you'll see there that it's telling us that the to form a, a complete triangle or ridge at the highest point for each of these letters we need to engrave or carve this at least 0.58 of an inch deep we'll leave that as the default this the software automatically calculates that depth we could force it to go deeper we could say okay let's engrave it to the pocket depth of 0 0.6 but we'll leave it at 0.58 for the moment if we calculate the toolpath you'll see that the toolpath has been calculated to form the, the shape on the angled shape on the letters so the prismatic toolpath selected if we say preview this toolpath and if we give that some color so we'll make that we double click to maximize the three-dimensional view you'll see now that we've got this raised prismatic lettering that's been machined into the base of our pocket and remember the pocket was 0.6 of an inch deep so just to summarize we've taken the two-dimensional data so the vector boundaries we've created a pocket between the inner circle and the logo so this machines the background to a depth of 0.6 of an inch so that pockets the background away we've then machine calculated a texturing tool bath with the same vectors selected but the key thing here is that we've specified a boundary offset allowance 
of quarter of an inch, which is equal to the radius of the half inch cutter that we're using to actually machine the texture. This stops the cutter from damaging or bashing into the boundaries that we wish to keep. Once we've done that, we then created the, the raised prismatic, we close the texturing form, so the raised angled prismatic lettering, and we've done that using the prism machining toolpath. The software here has automatically calculated the depth for us. The software can do this by knowing the, the angle of the cutter that we use. So if we used a wider angle cutter, it would not need to be machining as deep. If it was a steeper angle cutter, it would need to be machining deeper. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.